that popping noise. And then let's get cracking. Ah. Work to do, and we the middle is where it's going to attach, and then it's going to be twisted. Okay. Whew. This is Picard. Picard. There we go, we've got the bit closed with some of our artificial sinew. We're gonna stair step them all the way back so we squared up edge. We can fit that around any given part of the whip. Curl will be cutting and prepping. Yeah, you can see this outside part of this breaks the leather over time. So to reinforce that, we have to I'm gonna take this first back up. Why are we running it back through the strander? Yeah, so as we stretch the core. Now I'm gonna cut these off, but I don't want it to be leather at this point, which is pretty neat. Okay, Garrett, we've got the strander set. Okay. Woo! And I'm gonna keep my finger on here so they don't others. So we don't we didn't have a completely consistent width. So we're running. The knots added onto the handle. We added a cracker onto the end of it. That's gonna make it so we can make that. So to get the best, check my page. I'm holding. I wonder how I can fix a paracord. As you saw, I pulled out the cord. I'll fill in all the gaps over the next three strands. Faster than that if we weren't. And I'm just gonna kinda lay it over here. I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna go on. If you're in, and in between the two left hand strands. A really sharp bending point at the end of the handle or really anywhere along there, just kinda keep we love so much. I think we need to give this thing a test. Let's go. Let's head outside. Paracord just a bit. And Garrett is telling me a strand cutter that we used a lot today. The box at the bottom will show you what YouTube thinks you need to Now we have our heel knot found. We're gonna lay this. So now we're gonna want to find the middle of each of these two strands and then we're gonna take the over the whip along here so that we get the exact same length back. And I'm pushing. I would say that's a good estimation for how much time it would take for your first time through. Garrett, if people from both ends because grip and doesn't just slide right off. Pretty standard for whip making. I let to sit and turn into this kind of pasty, lardy substance. And, and basically what this is, is just emulsified uh, lard, soap, and water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer from a diamond plat. So a tapered reinforcement. We wrap the heck out of this thing and you can see that we don't have Keeps going with this nice tapered rolling edge. That's just what we want. So it's an empty hall. We're done. We finished our whip. Yep. And just gonna go straight into the core. So they're just gonna be plaited around as if they are part of as, as, as most as possible a consistent strand. They're just enough that it really started melting. What we're gonna do, stretch them. I had to make these today. Yeah, no problem. I had an awesome time doing it with you. Overall, I think this took about twist down and we're gonna measure uh, how much we need. So, we're gonna take some of this sinew and wrap it all the way around this metal rod so it gets a lot better grab it. I wonder who in the whip making process was like, just the way it is, then the uh, area of the whip, it's gonna help to make it as perfectly around as possible. Uh, a little bit less, and then back, and then less again, and then back, and so we're just gonna kinda be bouncing. As we go down the length of the whip, here, This leather that we've uh, just cut out, we're gonna be cutting out three. As we're gonna loop and back around. Three, 20 strands. And then, there you go. And more plaiting soap to the strands on the end of the kangaroo hide. Another lace to, what is it, three feet and 10 inches. Just whips in general, just on over one. And if we did that for the entire length of the whip, we would just like an immediate stair step because I want to have a nice smooth taper. We're now just going to taper the top a little bit, just using a file. So we're just going to... We've now stretched out this... ...taper possible. I'm going to... Okay, now we have our foundations done. Now we're going to go ahead and tie the knots on over this entire little piece here. So I want it to be as compacted as possible. You can see a big difference. A heel knot and a transition knot. For the heel knot, we're gonna build up a foundation. Wrapped and rolled this whole thing. So Garrett, what is our next step? Next, we are gonna, we actually want to keep wrapping it a few times because we have a metal stick to about right here. Garrett is something of an expert on watching next and this bomb in the middle will subscribe you to the channel. Some foot and a 10 foot. And those will get dropped at various points in the whip.
We're removing the guts. Don't have a looper under over pattern. It's called diamond plat. Yep. You can see it fairly well and you can definitely feel it. I mean, this feels. In today's video, we're going to use the lace cutter that we showed you how to make previously. Cutter, and it's all kind of mixed together and then heated up and cooked in, a, in the stove and then uh, like, my whip is kind of squeaky. Okay, now. To make our bar fit a little bit nicer into our paracord. The overlay strands. More lace. Yeah, so we're just gonna cut. I'm going to wrap it tight using this black artificial sinew. We've now wrapped the whip all the way down to the end of the leather, and in fact, even a little, and it'll hold onto it tight. So I'm gonna take, so I still have a nice curvature. <laughs> we are just about ready to start plaiting our four feet of paracord. It's not gonna be a, an exact science. And we are going to hide. So I'm cutting my strands to be fairly wide. So I'm gonna be cutting. This is the completed whip. The leather was just for fun. And using some scrap, the bolster is completely straight and the belly. Look at this strand that's been threaded into our lacing needle. Putting all our kangaroo lace by the middles that we found when we were cutting them. I'm gonna do a little bit of braiding to make the belly. So we're gonna take our very high tech, uh, is down decoration bits on it. What are we gonna do about that? We're going to be adding that to reinforce it a little bit more. Be here for 10 years and it would, it would be a lot, it would be a lot of work and it wouldn't be worth it to get to where the cracker starts. So the paracord has this inner wrapping, twisting and braiding it around it to this paracord. Foundation done. Now we're going to make a foundation for our transition. Smaller and smaller to give it really don't move. And I'm going to fuse the inner and the outer strand together do that in the first place. Here is the idea. We're going to be cutting out a lot of kangaroo leather lace. How much more narrow the paracord and athletic tape bullwhip. Garrett is the one who taught me how to do this and makes it about as perfectly around as we can get. I'm just going to start on this end and work my way down and uh, guts to it. Just going to pull this down as much as possible. A bunch of long strands. We're actually, we have two hides, so I'm going to work on a hide and you're going to work on a hide. to what's called a herringbone plait. So we're gonna take, we're gonna go under these first three strands, and then open. And it got a lot darker too, like this basically just looks like black. And we're gonna continue that pattern down the thong. That gets thinner and thinner and thinner until it becomes just one strand, until we cut these at kind of long angles. To make a tapered fall, so it's gonna have a little Guys, that's not all. We've got more for you to see. That box up at the top will transport you to our last video where we showed you how to make up to a certain point. In order to make this six and a half foot kangaroo hide bullwhip, we're gonna start with a paracord core. And they're not lining up out of the paracord. It's just gonna go right in. Use a piece of uh, scrap kangaroo hide. We're gonna twist each strand. It bumps in it, but it doesn't feel like the pieces of the plait are sticking out the way. Black kangaroo leather lace. So we, I'm just going to thread it straight into stabbing through artist. the side. This last strand, this, this is the strand that was uh, all the way to the right. So, ha! In the same direction, and then just begin to whip. We actually have to drop strands. Two strands that are that were super useful when I was kind of learning how to make leather whips. The first was how to make whips by Ron Ed. All knowledge about you need to cut about eight, nine inches. Uh, whip rolling device. Uh, I, I sell our time at a slightly smaller. Uh, we'll ring that bell and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you. Over. So that second one is just the opposite of what the first one was. To go over that a few times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep wrapping with the sinew down six inches from the end of the Watch the strands. Different parts of the leather stretch a little bit more than slick metal and our leather has some lotion all over it. Now that I've cut about 30 feet of lace, I'm gonna end this specific cut. Artisan whip rolling devices on Etsy for 400, about 30 feet of lace for the first belly. Cut a long tapering triangle that's gonna cover the ends on the inside of it that we can thread onwards. Another book that I thought was really useful was Whips and Whip Making. This is what this looked like before, and here it is after. You can see how around our hook. 
So to start, let's get cutting. Got pretty much the whole handle done. And you said that's about eight inches worth of handle? Yes. It's an artificial sinew. Now we're adding a second piece of leather, which is gonna be kind of cross of uh, this quarter inch steel rod. Okay, so a thicker strand. And this lacing needle has little threads. Some more lace and it strands. I've brought uh, some of this homemade plaiting soap. This whip 40. Now I'm going to fill two feet of this with BBs. And while I do that, Garrett is going to be cutting the strands with the They are here. Can we roll it right? Exactly. So as we go along, I'm going to be adding Right, now at this point, it looks like we've got to probably do it a little bit but really tight. So when we reach, there we go, I measured about two feet in, I twisted the entire surface of this whip. And this is gonna help to kind of reinforce uh, all the then. bottom right hand strand. This is the last time in a way that tapers, so we don't have just a sudden end. All right, here. And we're gonna fill that core uh, with BBs, so our bull whip will have a little bit more heft and weight to it. <laughs> now that we've finished, under and so unrolled here, rolled here, it'll, you'll actually end up with a squeaky whip, and your whip will squeak anytime you move it or try to. Curl. We've now cut a whole bunch of lace and then follow a bunch of steps to make a kangaroo. It is a piece of paracord and then I hit it with the light and it's gonna just help add a little bit of thickness as well. So what I'm thinking is and then by squeezing it together, it basically just formed a solid plastic bit in the middle. Very cool, 36 feet of our now almost, yes. It's just gonna end up hinging right on that point so much that it breaks start become kind of crusty and as the different layers of the whip kind of rub against each other take this whole thing and roll it again the same way we did when we just had $80 each if you are interested in learning more about whip making what do you suggest there were two books that I actually thought definitely wider than this we can sort of see the crazy difference here this they're ending here on the other side they're ending here so we get smaller and then smaller one slightly you're just a product that you buy no this is just And if we try and should be. So right now, it. Uh, <laughs> we have come outside and it is time to finally test this whip of the kangaroo hide is actually pretty stretchy. So the next step we're gonna do is to run this by David Morgan. Uh, and it just gives you a lot of general of a tapered twist. Now we're working on the very outside of the hide. And the outside is the most stretchy part of the explaining how you know how thick your lace to wrap around handle over there to where we've braided it right here. And so now what we need behind Pull-ups at least a whole lot more than me, and in fact, if you've seen our video on how to make so you never miss a video, don't forget to- This was 30 feet before we stretched it out, yeah. and it was- So next we're gonna put a cowhide bolster on the outside of this whip. So basically, we're gonna come- But this is a pretty- Again, everything with the whip wants to be tapered. On one side, the guts are pieces, and that's because we're gonna be ending in a six-point fall shaped. We're gonna put that over the end through a, a hook and kind of stretch all. We've cut about four braided whip. So to lubricate this, is plating soap. So this is gonna be our start. And we're gonna wrap it. We don't want it to kind of twist oh, so around. Yeah, we, we, want, we want a straight seam going the entire side. The smallest strand. I'm gonna take it, wrap it around. <laughs> crack our whip, and then we can mark where it's making contact with the leather. Platted, we have platted our leather. Shorter than the rest. Be taken away from the sides where I'm plotting. I didn't give it a few tap. It back and forth on this hook. So for on the handle, we did a diamond plat, which was an uh, under one, over one, under one, over one, under one. But it doesn't have the iconic handle. Next, we need to roll the whip. So when we roll the whip, it kind of rounds out all the edges. Under. So this under, over. Okay, so to form a bowl whip. We'll take it outside. The other strand, so it becomes a little uh, that. I'll try adding some weird goop on the inside. And I'm gonna go under, 
over leather and we're gonna tack that on with some nails, a little bit of a loop that will make it easy to attach to our whip. Okay, so but beyond the cow leather bolster onto the- A fully functional kangaroo hide whip. Garrett, thank you so much for teaching us how hard leather dressing. It's we also, we want to make sure that So the way, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just slowly kind of taper it off to the, all the breading of the overlay. 12 hours of work. So now I'm just going to run my finger twisting it around each other. Hide bullwhip. <laughs> the very end of the whip, the longest strands, we're going to be using 6 2 foot. Take it over the top right hand strand and around stretching it. We're going to start pulling. We can take this it through the strander one more. Under over. We need to add the fall. To make the fall, and now we're just going to of each uh, strand of paracord, then we're going to snip it off. Did this flattened piece of the whip. This whip is looking really sweet. What we're going to do now is thread one of these strands into it. As we get our leather wrapped around both the steel rod and the paracord, we're interested. There are links in the description below of where you can get your hands on those books. Guys, like it's braided, and this just, you can feel a little bit completely, or all the stretch out of it, so that we, with a fair amount of force, just uh, leather dressing, it's uh, way down. What you do is cut off the four pieces of laces and wrap leather lace onto this rod. We're gonna cut an 18 foot, a four. We're now going to be adding leather dressing, and is this a homemade thing? couple feet and then back and then a knot. One thing that can happen with leather whips that get dry if they're not very well conditioned on the inside is the core would like to go in increments all the way down. And the way we're going to twist this, aren't filming at the same time, that always slows things down, but again, just because we always all kinds of whips and it was really, really useful. Yep. I'm going to take it. That way uh, we can have